I want you to understand that the church history on this is not lost. In other words, the church has been building from the inside out for, for years, decades, centuries. And we have been um, just recently building from the outside in in our understandings. Here's what I mean. If you've ever been to Europe, you've seen uh, perhaps some of the cathedrals in Europe. They're fascinating. They're these massive structures. I remember going to one in, in um, Germany, and they, they estimated that it took 300 years to complete the building of this cathedral. So the, the guy who started it is obviously not the guy who completes it, or he's really old, but the, the guy who started it is, is envisioning his part, and then generations are picking it up until it's completely built. Well, the cathedrals, when you go into them, you find that here's what the floor plan of a cathedral looks like. Generally, the entry point is here or here, something like that. And you, and you come into a cathedral this way. There is an altar right here. Oops. And there's uh, many times there's a smaller altar perhaps up here as well. Okay? And, and so when a cathedral like this was going to be built, and uh, uh, the guy who is planning on building it goes to the architect and says, okay, we need to lay this thing out. The architect's first question is, where are you putting the altar? Because everything got built from the inside out this way. The altar was the single most important placement point. And then everything got built from that point on. Even the cornerstone, let's say, if the cornerstone were to be laid here, it would be laid after the altar was structurally mapped out. Okay? Now, you remember when Ezra comes back uh, in the captivity, he comes back out of the captivity, and they're going to rebuild Jerusalem. What's the first thing they do? They lay the foundation of the altar. The altar is central to the encounter, and that is because an altar is where God, man, and the land meet together. God, man, and the land meet together. That's where you put an altar. It's a corporate encounter place. And we, in many ways, and I'll get to this in a moment, we've lost the construct of the altar. The altar is the revelation of holy. It, it signifies, as it were, the very presence of God. And I remember even growing up in a Methodist church as a, as a young man that the altar, the, the holiness of the altar was to be respected and revered. And there were certain things you just did not do in the, in the sanctuary in front of that altar. And, and I don't mean just immoral things. I mean there was just activities you were not allowed to do in that sanctuary because that altar was a holy place. And it was understood to be that. Now a lot of times we call that religion. But religion is many times where we've moved, removed our own faith and our own relationship with God in the context of any given structure. And we call it religious at that point. It doesn't mean that the people doing it were religious or under a, a religious spirit. So 